Good morning, everyone. Today I am going to discuss about topic insect integument. So before going to the main topic, we should know about first what insect integument is. Most of the students they have misconcept that insect integument is otherwise called as cuticle. But actually, the insect integument is simply the body wall of the insect that consisting of different parts, just like basement membrane, epidermis and cuticle that means the cuticle is a part of integument part of integument not integument cuticle is a part of integument and these things i will discuss in the next slides i have told you the insect body wall is called as uh, this integument that is called as also exoskeleton exo that means what out that means ecto that means this insect integument is derived from the ectoderm that is ectodermal in origin this is also variously modified that is rigid flexible lighter and stronger why this should be flexible because all the body parts has to move properly that means all the body parts uh, should have some movable parts or the flexible parts that's why this body wall or the exoskeleton or integument should be flexible this should be lighter mostly insects are flying that's why for a flying species body weight should be less that's why insect integument also is lighter in nature and this should be stronger in nature also why it should be stronger in nature for resisting the external adverse conditions this body wall should be very strong also and rigid also so what is the definition of insect integument so it is a outer layer of the insect comprising of inner cellular layer and outer non cellular layer so i have given here the three diagram the insect body wall one is it has inner cellular part another is outer non cellular part the cellular part is called as epidermis and this non cellular part is called cuticle okay and this cuticle is further divided into three parts one is endocuticle exocuticle and epicuticle and this epicuticle is consisting of five components so simple diagram you just uh, remember here this is one layer this is another layer this is another layer okay so what will happen i am thinking this is epidermis epidermis that means it is the cellular layer this is the non cellular layer that is cuticle okay and this this layer is called as basement membrane what actual basement membrane is in the storage condition when we are gathering some storage items or the gurney bags with some rice so we are putting this on a slab or a wooden uh, board that means what that is called as uh, just like basement membrane wooden board that means uh, this gurney bag should not be con directly contact to this ground that's why the moisture should not be absorbed by this gunny bag. Same thing here also. This is the basement membrane. That is means this is a barrier. So what will happen? This will this will resist this cuticle to attach another body parts. So this is the basement membrane, and this basement membrane is non-cellular in nature. Okay. So this full is called as insect integument or the body wall. So first is basement membrane that is non-cellular layer epidermis is the cellular layer and this is cuticle is a non-cellular layer okay and this cuticle is further divided into three different parts one is endocuticle another is exocuticle and uppermost is epicuticle so i will discuss these things in the next slide so here what is basement membrane so this is the basal part of the body wall i have told you this is the but this one this basal part of the body wall this continuous sheath beneath the epidermis that means underneath of epidermis that is a non cellular layer that is called as basement membrane so actually this basement membrane is the degenerated epidermal cells that means so whatever the epidermal cells are are degenerated after their function they become this basement membrane and i have told you before these are non cellular in nature and the thickness is 0.5 micron also and this consisting of proteins collagen and glycoproteins 
So main thing you have to remember here, what is basement membrane? The basement membrane is degenerated epidermal cells and this is non-cellular in nature and 0.5 micron in thickness, okay. Next is epidermis. So what is epidermis? I have told you the epidermis is the cellular part that is uh, present beneath this cuticle layer. So this is a unicellular layer. This is a unicellular layer. And this is consisting of set of polygonal cells that may be cuboidal, that may be columnar cells. So I will tell you what are the different cells in the when I will discuss about the molting process. Okay. So you see here I have depicted in this picture uh, here different types of cells are there. Okay. So these cells are cuboidal, cuboidal in nature or polygonal, polygonal or columnar in nature. So these cells are called as epidermal cells. These cells are called as epidermal cells. And this one epidermal, here is one epidermal cell, another is another epidermal cell, okay. So these epidermal cell, both of the epidermal cells are adjacently joined by one tissue that is called as desmosomes. Here another also epidermal cells. So these are called as desmosomes. This is the connecting tissues between these epidermal cells is called as desmosomes, okay. And the cells are glandular or secretory in nature. Because you see here in this picture, one is opening duct of the dermal gland. Okay, opening duct of the dermal gland. That means there is a canal-like structure through which some of the secretion of this epidermal cell will release out. Okay, so these secretory, these epidermal cells are secretory in nature. They will secrete some of the proteins, some of the um, uh, enzymes, and these things will be secreted out through this canal that is called as dermal gland. Uh, secretion and this uh, canal is called as pore canal okay and also the main function of the this uh, epidermis is absorb or digest the old cuticle that means during the molting process whatever this old cuticle is degenerated from this uh, molting process this old cuticle is absorbed by or digested by this epidermal cells okay so there are different types of modification of epidermal cells one is dermal gland that will secrete cement layer. One is trichogen cell that will form the citta or trichome. Another is a molting gland that will produce the molting fluid. Another is peristigmatic gland that is surround the spiracles. But oh, what do we mean by peristigmatic? Peri means surrounding. Peri means surrounding. Stigmatic means stigma. Stigma is somewhat related to spiracles. So here is the spiracle is there. So around this spiracle, some of the glands will be there. These are the, some of the glands. Okay. So these are the peristigmatic gland and that will surround spiracles and that will, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, peristigmatic gland will secrete their secretions to the spiracle so that what will happen, what about the outer dust particles will come you know, to this uh, spiracles that will be absorbed quickly by the spiracles and that dust particle will not go to inside the trachea and they will protect the trachea from the other dust particles okay this is the function of this peristigmatic gland okay so in a simple diagram i have depicted all the layers of this integument i will discuss you discuss with you okay so here so i have told you this is the basement membrane the lower this lower layer is called basement membrane okay this is the non cellular layer and 0 0.5 micron Okay, another is the epidermis layer. I have told you this is the cellular layer. You see different types of cells. These cells are polygonal or cuboidal or the columnar cells. And there is a space-like structure. There is a sp special structure that is called cuticular space or skimlet layer. Okay, so this layer I will discuss in the molting. So this layer is generally formed during the molting process. Okay. Okay. Then I have told you the cuticle, this is the non-cellular part, non-cellular part, okay. And then this cuticle is differentiated into the three different parts. First is endocuticle, second is the exocuticle and third is epicuticle. So remember by this uh, simple diagram, don't be confused with some complex diagram, simple diagram I am telling you. Here is the first layer, here is the second layer, okay. Here is the third layer, these are the fourth. Okay, you see. First is what basement membrane that is non cellular. Okay, second is what second is epidermis that is cellular layer. 
This one what skimmed it layer, skimmed it layer. That is a somewhat space like structure. Okay. And these three consisting of non-cellular part that is called cuticle, non-cellular part. Okay. So this cuticle is differentiated into three different parts. One is endocuticle, one is exocuticle, and other is epicuticle. And this epicuticle cuticle is consisting of five different parts. Okay. Remember one formula C W P C C W P C. Okay. So for remembering, I am telling you the trick C W P C. That means from the upper to down. I am telling from the up to down C W P C means this is the epicuticle. This is the parts of epicuticle. So first is cement layer. Second is the wax layer. This is the polyphenol layer that is consisting of two parts. One is this outer epicuticle and inner epicuticle. And the lowest one is cuticulin. Cuticulin. Okay. So C W P C. You just remember. Okay, and these are the cells that is called as a trichogen and thermogen. So I will discuss you in the latter. Yes. So what will happen here? The, these are the chemical composition of the cuticle. Okay. So what will happen? The cement layer is consisting of lipid or trans proteins. That is mucopolysaccharides. Okay. And this protects from the body from the external damage. Cement. That means very hard structure. If you beat in hard structure, that hard structure will never break. That means it is providing some the protection to the body. That's why the cement layer is providing the protection to the body from the external damage. And it's consisting of the mucopolysaccharide. And the second is the wax layer. Wax means you know always wax is related to esters. Wax is always related to ester. Remember this thing. So this, this is a long chain hydrocarbon structure that is called the ester of fatty acids. Ester of fatty acids. You know this wax are just like fat like structure. That means this is fatty acids. Okay. Or some polyphenols. That is hydrocarbons also. So wax means what? This wax. If you put one drop of water on the wax, this wax will just slip down. That means there is a waterproofing like structure that is called a wax. So this wax has some waterproof. Or this prevents the water loss. If the body uh, integrity is consisting of this wax layer, what will happen? Whatever, if any adverse climatic condition will come or more sunny days come, the more heat will come, then what will happen? The body moisture will not evaporate through this uh, cutic, through this uh, body wall because wax layer is present. Okay. Then another thing is the outer epicuticle and inner epicuticle. So, this is mostly consisting of polyphenols, polyphenols, okay. That's why it's called a poly, polyphenol layer, okay. This and most main function of this polyphenol layer is protein secretion, protein secretion. And this cuticulin, so cuticulin is a non-chitinous lipoprotein layer and amber colored and permeable to the growth and growth and barrier, okay. So, there are different types of proteins are there. What are different proteins? One is arthropodin. That is ontian and water soluble. How you will remember? I will tell you. One is endocuticle. Endocuticle. Okay. And another is arthropodin. Arthropodin. So here D is there. Here D is there. That means endocuticle is consisting of arthropodin and chitin. Okay. Remember one thing. Arthropodin here D is there and endocuticle also D is there. That's why most endocuticle and this arthropodin are somewhat related to each other. But in case of sclerotin, this is tanned protein and this is water insoluble. How will remember what is, uh, which is the tan structure, what is the water insoluble structure? Tanning means what? Tanning means what? Somewhat black color. Somewhat colored. So this is black color and somewhat hard structure also. Okay. How you remember, if one stone is there, okay, one stone is there, one is white color, another is black color. The white color stone is somewhat newer, newly, newly emerged, but this black color is very old, old structure, that means very hard, but this white color is very new, that means it's very smooth, that means if you put this hard color structure in the water, what will happen, this will not melt properly, this will not soluble properly, that means, Whatever the black color structures are there, that will not soluble in the water properly. 
same thing you have to put the trick here also this clerotin is tanned tanned in nature that means it's very hard in nature it's very black in nature that's why that's why it is water insoluble but in the arthropod what will happen this is on tanned that means it's not black it's not hard that's why it is water soluble and i have told you in arthropodin d is there in endo cuticle also d is there that means this endo cuticle is consisting of chitin and arthropodin but uh, this exoskeleton that is sorry exo cuticle exo cuticle is consisting of sclerotin plus chitin but remember one thing another thing also ap cuticle ap cuticle there is no chitin in nature there is no chitin present in this ap cuticle so if question will arise which layer of this insect integument is non chitinous in nature that is called as ap cuticle because there is no chitin percentage in this ap cuticle layer okay and another protein is called resilient that is called flexibility that will mostly present in the wings because when this insect will uh, go for flying that uh, protein will act as a flexibility protein that is called as resilient and that will mostly present in the wings okay another is a protein lipids mostly that will protective or communication mostly communication means for the pheromone glands or other thing this uh, lipids will uh, secret so whenever i will discuss about pheromones i will discuss in details okay another is chitin so you have to remember this chitin formula that is 6 c8 h13o5n so this is consisting of 30 to 40 percent of insect cuticle and this chitin is mostly abundant in uh, endo cuticle okay and specific gravity is 1.4 and stretchability is 13 oh, specific gravity is 1.4 means when gravity mostly specific gravity is uh, calculated in with respect to water okay water so specific gravity of water is 1 so when we are putting this cuticle in the in this uh, chitin in this water this chitin will will settle down that means it will drop down that means the insect cuticle has the specific gravity of 1.3 that means it's much more heavier than that of water and most important important thing is chitin is consisting of n acetyl glucosamine in the ratio of 6 to 1 you have to remember these things very very important question from the exam point of view okay so chitin is consisting of n acetyl glucosamine and glucosamine in the ratio of 6 is to 1 so dormant uh, chitin is alpha chitin and insoluble water alkali diluted acids and organic solvents okay so this chitin is what uh, the nature of the chitin is insoluble in case of water alkali dilute acids and organic solvents but it is soluble in sodium hypochlorite only solvent that is sodium hypochlorite that will digest the chitin okay so you have to remember so i have told you so mean i will uh, again i am telling you so one thing is endocuticle another is exocuticle another is epicuticle okay endocuticle means what i have told you d is there that means this is arthropodin d plus chitin exocuticle was sclerotin plus chitin but here no chitin okay and you have to remember CWPC cement layer, wax layer, polyphenol layer, cuticle layer. Okay, you have to remember. Okay, then what is arthropodin? This is non tanned protein, water soluble, sclerotin, tanned protein, water insoluble. You just go with my trick, you will remember nicely. Okay, so no need to be confused. Okay, so another is there are different cellular and non cellular structures. One is what the non cellular structures so this is non cellular that means it will i am telling you this epidermis is cellular in nature so whatever the structure is contacting with this epidermis that will be cellular structures and whatever the structure she is not directly in contact with epidermis that is non cellular in structure so what will be non cellular structure means not contact with epidermis because epidermis is cellular that means what when one person is standing okay he has some current pass from any electric uh, shock. If we put this, if we touch that person also, some electric shock will come to you. That means that part is, that person is electrical in nature, electrically positive, and you are also touching him. That means you are also electrically positive. Same thing here, this epidermis layer is cellular in nature, and whatever the structure will touch that epidermis, 
it will be also positive that uh, cellular in nature and if any structure is not touching directly to the epidermis that is non cellular in nature you have to remember by this thing okay so cellular structure means contact with the epidermis cuticular process cuticular process means this is a micro micro trachea or fixed layers fixed layers or aculei you have to remember what is macro trachea and micro trachea so cuticular process are called as micro trachea or fixed hairs or aculei and uh, city or macro trachea is called trichogen cell or hypodermal cell and termogen is the covering cell okay i have told you in that uh, epidermal uh, cells some of the cells are present that are called as uh, trichogen and termogen actually this trichogen and termogen are called as macro trachea or city but uh, this fixed hairs or aculei are called as cuticular processes okay so these are the some of the cellular structures you have to remember i will provide some tricks eh? you just try to remember by these things okay unicellular uni means one cellular means some cells cell. only one cell will be there means that is unicellular multicellular means what most so many number of cells number of cells are there so you remember by one thing uni means what one only that means you can tell as singular okay multi means what more that means we can tell as plural so singular means what will come s will come plural means what will come p will come okay so wherever the s is there that is called as unicellular structures you see here scales sitta 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 so what means scale and sitta these are the unicellular structures and another thing you have i have to i have to tell you whatever the any structure is moving very nicely that is called as unicellular structures you means hair one is hair another is bristle okay if any force will come that will what will happen that will that can move easily that can move flexibly that is called a unicellular structure okay you have to remember this is the trick only no concept behind this thing okay any structure is moving very light very smoothly or there is a movable very fastly that is called as unicellular structures your hair is there if any wind will come what will happen the hair will flow nicely same thing is bristle also what will happen in so many house fly have some of the bristles if air wind wind will come what will happen this bristle cell vibrate the bristle cell swing so these hairs bristles and i am i have told you singular means s yes, that means seta and scales these are the singular in nature singular in nature or unicellular in nature and but uh, you will tell me sir uh, this uh, scale and septa they have s yes. but here also in spore and spine also s yes is there but you have to remember in here spore and spine have p also there p means what plural p means what plural that means multicellular in the plural means what that is uh, plural means what that is so many numbers are there that means the spore spine wax gland i have told you wax gland is uh, present of different types of esters so I mean, so many cells are there that's why wax gland is also what uh, multicellular in nature you you just remember one thing gland one is another is cell cell is the only one structure but this gland is consisting of different cells one gland can be formed by diffusion of different cells that's why wherever the gland term will come that is multicellular in nature okay but uh, one exception is that that is called as centered scales or androconia it is also type of scale but it is a androconia or centered scale just like a gland like structure that is multicellular in nature okay whatever whatever the gland is there that is called uh, multicellular in nature okay so one thing i am telling you last unicellular and multicellular unicellular means singular multicellular means plural singular means s is there that means whatever the s term will come that is unicellular nature that is septa scales everything and whatever the structures are swing properly with the wind that means bristles hair that are also unicellular nature and multicellular in nature means whatever the p will come this means plural the spore spine and where the gland term is there means uh, gland is consisting of different cells that's why gland and the spine and spore and centered scale or androgonia these are multicellular in nature okay but you have to remember everything this examples i will not tell you examples you have to just by heart this uh, examples clothing clothing hairs honey bee plumous hairs honey bee distilled flies scales moth and the butterfly what are the scales 
when we are taking some insect wing or butterfly we are just sweeping this insect wing that uh, butterfly wing some uh, powder like structure will come that are only the scale structure okay so just you have to remember all this examples by this i am uh, concluding this lecture hope you are understanding well if you any doubt you can ask me or you can whatsapp me in my uh, personal whatsapp also i will try my best to uh, solve everything thank you so much